All right, looks like everyone's good to go. So um, first of all, welcome here to Bean Blossom Community Church as we are excited to have uh, the Rosedale Corral here with us. Uh, if you're not familiar with, the, um, with Rosedale or Rosedale Bible College, they're a college in Rosedale, Ohio. Um, the conference of churches that we're a part of is um, basically Rosedale Bible College is the uh, educational institution for our conference of churches. Um, so uh, anyway, they, uh, I think it's about four hours from here or something like that, approximately three and a half. Uh, they do have a bunch of information about the college on that table in the back. So afterwards, if you have any interest in it or you think uh, you know someone who might be interested in it, I encourage you to grab some of that information. Um, I think they got some CDs and other stuff there too. Um, also, uh, if you're from this church and you know Vera Wagler, uh, her face seems to be on everything that they put out. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how did you manage to pull that off, Vera? I don't know. Vicky asked me to take a picture when they got the picture. <laughs> <laughs> You've been regretting it ever since, huh? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So you can also ask Vera if you got questions, or afterwards you can talk to them as well. So um, they are, we're very happy to have them here. I will mention too, uh, in that front entryway, there's a donation plate if any of you feel led to, to give to Rosedale Bible College. I know that they will definitely appreciate that, um, partly because the donations and stuff. Uh, they are one of the cheapest Bible colleges around. So again, if you know somebody who's uh, interested in going to a Bible college for a couple of years, that's a, a really, really amazing opportunity there. Um, I think that's it for what I have to say now. Uh, um, I guess let's uh, open up in prayer and then we'll invite the choir to take over from here. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity to worship together with um, all these young believers from Rosedale. And we just pray that, uh, that this evening would be glorifying to you, that we would all just be um, just inspired by what it is you're doing in our lives and your grace, your mercy, your love. Uh, just minister to us uh, through these songs and uh, through what's being said and help us to grow in you. We need you desperately. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Pleasure to be here with you this, on this beautiful sunny afternoon and to be sharing a time of uh, worshiping our Lord, our Savior through choral music. And we invite you to join us in that. As, you, as we sing, you listen and you think about these wonderful words. We just pray uh, and hope that it's a time and experience of worshiping our God. If you look in your programs, you'll find a call to worship on the insert sheet there, and we'd like for you to participate in this if you could, and uh, just respond when it says you should. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations.
Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? For you who fear God's name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. And Jesus wept throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every affliction and disease among the people. There is a we need to keep going back to that balm and Gilead for us it's the, the love of Jesus in our lives and it is so easy to get caught up in things especially in this last year uh, with all the the activities that's been going on um, it's sometimes we forget to share the love of Jesus and I think that balm and Gilead helps soothe some of the the hurts that we have and it's uh, just encouragement to keep returning to that our theme uh, for this evening is in the fullness of time. And this next feature is especially for children. Don't have many of them here, but you're gonna have to be kids at heart for us here in just a little bit, right? So if you can do that, uh, we'll, we'll be just fine. 
Hi, I'm Tick. Hi, I'm Tuck. Together, we, we make, make the sound, sound of a clock. clock. Tick. Tuck. We know, we know. That's the name of a social media platform these days. We were really ticked when that came along. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we, we were, were here, here first. first. Hey, Tuck, I have a riddle for you. What is one question that you can ask at any time during the day and get completely different but correct answers? Hmm. Well, I'm stuck. Can anyone here help me out? What time is it? Uh, That's right. The answer is what time is it? Okay, I have another one. What time of day can you spell both the same forwards and backwards? Does anybody have a guess? Noon. Yes, that's right. The answer is noon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the title of today's presentation is... It's About Time! <laughs> Now, did you know that most of the New Testament was written in the Greek language, which has two different words for time? Do tell. Well, you see, time one is the type of time that you measure with numbers by using a clock or a calendar. So that would be like, if I'm visiting my friend at four o'clock, we can call that time number one or clock time because we measure it on a clock. Exactly. Or if I was on a trip for five days, which is a long time, then we'll also call that time number one or clock time because you measure it using numbers. That's right. Two is the type of time when everything is in place for something to happen. That kind of time is like if I'm baking a cake and the top is nice and smooth and the toothpick comes out clean, we'll call that everything is ready time because it's time for the cake to come out of the oven. And it's time for me to eat it. <laughs> That's time number two. Everything is ready time. Exactly. It's quiz time. Okay, I've got one. In the story of Jesus' birth, King Herod calls the wise men to him in order to ask at what time did the star appear above baby Jesus. Now, is that clock time or is that everything is ready time? Does anybody have a guess? Everything is ready time. That's close. The answer is <laughs> clock time. <laughs> <laughs> I have one, but this one's a bit more tricky. It has three different words for time. The disciples asked Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus answered them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Is that clock time or is that everything is ready time? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a guess? Do you have a guess? I do. <laughs> I'm going to have to say that the disciples asked Jesus about one kind of time, but Jesus answered about both kinds of time. That's right. The disciples asked Jesus about clock time, but Jesus said that God hadn't revealed plans for either clock time or everything is ready time, so Jesus answered with both kinds of time. Jesus came to the earth the first time when the everything is ready time was just right. And he's coming back to the earth again when the clock time is just right. In the meantime, let's use the clock time we have by living our lives for him. Yeah.
something in that, all right? Two different kinds of time in the Bible, and they can be tricky to decide which one is which. You have to go back to the Greek at times to figure it out. We're going to take a brief break and let you hear a number from our Salt and Light Company. We were here, I don't know, two years ago, three years ago with the Salt and Light team, and we thought it'd be good if you'd get a chance to hear them sing um, another song, and so they are getting ready for that as we speak. You guys are good to go. Apparently they need to think about something here. Oh. <laughs> so they want me to fill the time. As one of them said, listen to the words. That helps. Um, <laughs> really cool. right. So we really enjoy doing kind of a kind of a folk style of music. Um, you good? Uh, but tonight we were deciding to do um, no sound equipment because there were good acoustics in this building. So we thought we'd do a song that was easy for us to just um, mostly just sing and have Jace play the guitar. So. That's what we're going to do.
lot of spiritual transformation over the past two years. Before coming to Rosedale, I, I read the Bible and I prayed, but I didn't necessarily know how to really study it and just look at context and history. I have really experienced just like a really solid community of people who really care about me and about each other. Years down the road, I wouldn't want to forget the friendships I formed here because I just I couldn't ask for her better friends that I have here. Being here with people that are at the same stage of life as you and asking some of the same exact questions and having conversations is just really helpful to grow. I didn't really have like a good solid foundation of like this is what I believe and this is why I believe it before coming to Rosedale. I was kind of more like this is what my parents believe so I'm gonna believe it and so after coming to Rosedale I'm able to like really challenge my beliefs and be like okay, why do I believe Matthew Cordella Bontrager, an instructor here at the college, uh, said this time could be kind of like a retreat. And he talked about how we view that in sort of a negative light. And really, it's actually a positive thing. It's a thing armies do to kind of re-strategize, to go out and prepare for battle when the enemy comes. And I think that for me, that's really been an accurate description of my whole uh, spiritual experience here at Rosedale, is this time has been a really amazing retreat for me to just kind of regather um, and refocus my life in relationship with Christ so that when I go back into the world uh, that I can be prepared and ready to face the challenges. The environment at Rosedale is amazing. I feel like I'm constantly doing something that matters. That's where I've actually seen growth in my life, to have like a steadiness in a schedule, in the professors, in beliefs. It's really impacted me in a way that keeps, I don't know, just keeps me wanting to follow Jesus all the more. I just love my Jesus. Rosedale came at just the right time in my life for me to just kind of build on my relationship with God. Ten years from now, when I look back at it, I'll be looking back at it at a time where I think God just cultivated a lot that was in my heart uh, for Him to really make it bloom and start getting that growth and start pushing me towards my calling for Him. My time at Rosedale has really helped direct me in that. Thank you very much. Just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for allowing us to come. 
for hosting us for the meal we will yet receive uh, after the program. And uh, we just know it's a challenge to have a group this size come into a church this size. But we love the acoustics here. What can we say? We love singing here. So uh, it, it's a, a great stop, and we enjoy it so much and just enjoy worshiping with you as we do it. Uh, you probably noticed the display in the back with Vera all over it. That <laughs> just said. So, uh, uh, we want to get a picture of Vera beside herself there. <laughs> I think that would look really neat, you know, kind of a double image thing going on here. So we'll work on that. So, no, uh, uh, stop by that, please, and check it out. Uh, go to our website, uh, look at rosedale.edu, uh, and just see the things that are happening at Rosedale. So we're really excited about training people up to be uh, kingdom workers, and sometimes that means going to the mission field, but sometimes that means finding a job down the street, but being a kingdom worker as you do that, and that's what we're about at Rosedale Bible College. So I uh, invite you to check those types of things out. Uh, again, back to the theme of our program, in the fullness of time. Uh, God works things in a way that isn't always according to our timing, but is according to his timing. In the fullness of time, Jesus who laid the foundations of the earth, who created the heavens by the work of his hands, came from days of eternity to the earth. In the fullness of time, God the Father sent his Son to be born of a woman under the law to redeem us all in, in the fullness of time. God who chose us before the foundations of the world in love predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus to the praise of his glorious grace in the fullness of time. God executed his plan redemption through Jesus' blood Forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. Revealing the mystery and lavishing his gifts on us. In the fullness of time, Christ will unite all things in heaven and on earth.
if you refer to your programs again, you'll find the words to the song we'd like to do next and like to have you help us on. It is the song, Who You Say I Am. And if you could find that and join us, and then on the next song that follows it, uh, join us if you know it on the verses where I turn around and direct you. Uh, that's Lift Your Glad Voices. So shall we stand together as we celebrate the position that we have in Christ?
Pastor Jeff, if you want to come up, have closing remarks and a prayer, after which we will sing Abide With Me, Tis Eventide. And we have some folders up here. Uh, Vera, you want to come up and help us sing this? Okay, anyone else? <laughs> 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 And then the other crowd alumni, if you happen to be here and I didn't see you, uh, just come on. <laughs> Having trouble, trouble holding myself together. It's so powerful. Thank you guys so much for coming. Um, it's been such a worshipful experience, so thanks a lot. And I, I know I'm, uh, you guys probably all agree, but um, uh, for me, it's been a great reminder just that in spite of the sufferings, God is with us. He's got something great in store for us. The sufferings are so worth it. The way of the cross is worth it. Um, uh, after we're done, I invite you to still, they'll be around. Uh, they will be having a meal here that our church is uh, providing for them. Um, we can't provide it to everyone. It's just we don't have enough room with COVID precautions. But at least until that happens, we invite you to stick around, talk to them, either here in the fellowship hall or you can gather outside as well and talk. Um, uh, but generally keep the fellowship hall mostly clear. We need to set up stuff there. But, um, but let's uh, close in prayer, and then uh, I think they've got a final song after that, and we'll... Um, Go, but let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so, so much for what you've done for us. We thank you for your sacrifice. We just thank you for your grace. Be glorified in us. We uh, pray in your name. Amen.